Hey guys, Nelson Ryan, Southern Light LED. We got one heck of a boat in here. This is the new 23 foot Bay Express um, boat. It's got, uh, we got a lot we're gonna do on this boat. We've got no drill bass boat light on the front. We're gonna do our anchor stern light that's gonna mount here on the power poles. We've got power pole um, glow we're gonna do inside the power poles. We have backup trailer lights, so we're gonna be doing our new backup trailer light kit. We've got green on the outside snake tubes we're doing down the whole side. It's gonna be about 19 foot of snake tubes, 19, 20 foot. We've got white snake tubes we're gonna do in the inside. One unique thing, this boat has a non-skid sprayed all over the exterior, or the interior, excuse me. We're gonna show you how to properly prep this non-skid material so our snake tubes adhere and you don't have any problems. The outside has a real smooth paint. You're not gonna have any issues, a lot less prep, real easy to put those on. Um, also, we're gonna do green underglow. We got a new underglow kit. It's a split system with a one bracket you can mount. But y'all stay tuned. We're going to uh, walk you through this boat and hopefully get some night pictures and everything of it in the end. Okay, first when you have a boat like this, a large 23 foot boat or a center console or even, you know, your typical bass boat. What you want to do is determine first where you're going to run your wire. Don't start sticking snake tubes on the, all over your boat, sticking lights on. You need to make sure where you're putting it, where your wire's ending up that you can actually get to the wire. So what we did on this boat, we have several cabins or boxes right here in the rear. We've got three. So what we did is we opened the first one closest to the side, took the tray out of it, and we noticed we have solid foam. Um, most of your boats, uh, these um, high fabricated boats from the factory, they spray the foam in real quick. They really don't have anything to do and it is everywhere. So you have two options. Depending on how close you are to the outside, you can take a paddle bit on a drill and you can start to you know, eat away at that foam, make sure there's no wires. We know there's no wires right here in this part of the boat. So you could do that. But a lot of these boats, I know trackers, this is an express, most of these boats have a real wide transom buildup here. This is a big hollow cavity right here before the deck starts. We got about 11 inches right here. And this is a big hollow cavity. The foam rarely expands up into this cavity. So what we decided was, can we get to this cavity? Well, we can't get to this cavity right here on this outside um, hatch. So what we did is went in here where the main battery and everything was. We can definitely get to this cavity and reach up in here and access this and we've determined that this is hollow. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole right here because we can easily see that we can get here. Sometimes we have an anchor stern light right here. You can unscrew this, take a peek in there with a flashlight, see what you're dealing with. There's also uh, access right here where the um, engine wires go in. And we unscrewed this, looked in there. You know, use every access you can to determine the situation you, you have. We determined that this thing is fully open. So we're gonna drill a hole right here. We're gonna run a fish tape through and make sure that we know it. we can get to it in the center where our batteries and everything are to where we can run it on up to our center console. Once we ran that, then we know we can stick our snake tubes on here. With this boat, we have a very, very nice finish on this boat. It's a uh, high gloss painted, you know, typical to your bass boats or high end boats. Um, on our duck boats and our other prep videos, you've seen where we've taken sandpaper and roughed it up. This is on boats using Chem 400 and these uh, cheaper um, camo paints that, you know, in these areas is not gonna have a good finish. When you buy a high-end boat like this, you're gonna have a much better finish. It's gonna be finished up underneath as well as the sides. So we have determined that this finish is perfect. We don't need to sand it. It's clean, it's slick. We're gonna clean it with the 50-50 alcohol water mixture. That's all you need to clean it with, nothing else. Take it, clean it, wipe it, until you get a cloth that is, has nothing left on it. 
you're wiping it to where it's dry and nothing's coming off on the cloth. If stuff keeps coming off, then you've got a little bit of issue. Contact us and we can help you through that, but you have to get it to where when you're rubbing it that it's clean and you have a 100% clean surface. Then you're ready, all you have to do is more or less peel and stick and you're good to go. Guys, we got our snake tubes on here. They, it went very, very easy. We cleaned the material and everything. We had approximately about 20 foot to go on this boat. This is that 23 foot Bay Express. We got here to the end and then we drilled a hole. We were able to run our fish tape straight through to our battery compartment in the center. And we ran our wires through right here. We're gonna take some black silicon and seal that hole off real good. Put some here at the end of this snake tube to help secure the beginning and the end right here. We're gonna put some in the front at the beginning. And that side's done. We're gonna repeat it on the inside and then we're gonna show you the inside how we do that. Okay, we moved on to the interior. This is the 23 Bay Express, new boat out. What we have here is we have this rough sprayed texture. When they spray this with this gun, it's almost impossible for them to get paint or any kind of texture up under here. It kind of gets, you know, secondary spray. So the material under here almost just comes off on your hand. Um, it is better than a typical duck boat. Um, but what we have to do is we have to get this smooth. We have to get most of this texture off, even if, you know, Sometimes it will go to just raw aluminum very easy or, you know, fiberglass, whatever the case might be. But we want to get to a sturdy material. If we adhere our snake tubes to a substrate or a, the first material, and it doesn't even stick to what it's sprayed to or painted onto, then it's just going to come off. So this is a very, very crucial step. We've done this with a lot of success in our shop on installs. We go through the time and do the measures that it takes to get this prep right. Um, we found you know, several tools that can sometimes speed it up. Sometimes they cause more problems than it's worth. Um, you can use you know, air grinders, whatever. Um, but still, we almost keep coming always back to a um, sand and sponge. It's just real quick and easy. You can just go under here and just rub it right down that. And then you can see see all that powder um, paint material. And then we almost already have a, you know, a smooth surface under there. We'll try this a little bit. And you... that's, that's real easy also. Um, Really all you're trying to do is, you know, smooth out the surface that you're actually adhering it to. Um, and on any kind of gunnel cap, I prefer that you always install the snake tubes as far out as you can. I think you just get a better illumination than putting them tucked further back up under there where they're almost hidden. Um, so I try to run them and use that outside edge as just guidance and run them right along this. Now what we'll do is the same as the outside once we get this smooth, which it, from here it's rough, right here it's just smooth as could be. But you see this chalk coming off on my hands. That right there is what we gotta start removing with the alcohol water mixture. We're gonna spray it, wipe it, wipe it, wipe it, wipe it till we get nothing left on our towel. We're gonna, and then start dry wiping it until nothing starts coming off. And then you'll be good to start adhering. One thing important on these snake tubes to so never forget, it's about a 72 hour curing process. It's not saying you can't touch it for 72 hours, but you don't want to stick them on and then leave it and then never come back to it. Within that 72 hours, we suggest periodically, depending on where your boat is, if it's sitting out in the hot sun, it's going to take more time to where you want to come by and repress all those on. If you just stick them on one time, leave them, there is a good chance that they could possibly um, unadhere from what you uh, stuck them to. So 
you must periodically, you know, I would say three times during a day for two days, make sure you go and firmly, firmly, firmly press and make sure that it's firmly pressed and adhering. As that heats up, heat is good for the, um, for the adhesion. Um, cold is very bad. If your boat, aluminum, uh, aluminum boats seem to be worse than the fiberglass styles, but if your boat sits out overnight and it drops to 40 degrees and then the next day at nine o'clock you try to put them on, that aluminum still will be pretty close to 40 degrees. Um, the snake tubes are not going to adhere very well to that. You're going to need to put it out in the sun, let it warm up, put it in your shop, let it warm up. You know, 75 degrees somewhere in there is a good temperature for the snake tubes to be. The snake tubes also, you don't want to leave them in your truck and it's 30 degrees you know, overnight and they're in your truck and those snake tubes and that adhesion material 3M backing gets um, very, very low. Um, you you want to make sure you warm up both the snake tubes and whatever you're adhering them to. And that's definitely one of the key factors we found to having, you know, no issues um, with your snake tubes. So those are some pointers we have. We're going to go on and get this finished sanded out and get these adhered and keep moving on with this project. This is going to be a nice boat. Uh, we'll get finished with it.